So, this is another sorter. It's been a while since I've done one outside of just, you know. <clears throat> I'm gonna remove duplicates, actually. It's been a while since I've done one of these outside of my own personal sorter. Mostly I find I've been using the tier list for a lot of the things I do. But what we're doing here is this sorter is similar to the roommate one I did some time ago. So, the objective of this one is, here's how we're doing it. It's based on the title, which I don't think I changed. So, let me do that real quick. Okay. So the title is Toa Sorter Based on Surviving a Deserted Island, which you could probably tell by the thumbnail as well. The point of this, uh, this is, here's as follows. So essentially, let's say, for whatever reason, you are stuck on a deserted island and you have to survive for a week. Maybe two, maybe even a month. But we'll, we'll kind of keep the estimate open for a conversation because, you know, why not? The restriction is you get to bring one character with you. Or I guess not so much that, more so just if it was this character compared to other character, of course. The objective is not to escape, it is only to survive. And to keep it equal, all characters will have the same restrictions that a normal human would have. AKA they get hungry, they get tired, you know. All the kinds of things like that. So characters like Yiko who do not have to worry about anything are, you know. But their personalities don't change, just their requirement for sustenance, that's all. So think of it like that. Granted, Yiko would still eat you to death, so. Like she'd eat all your goddamn food even if she couldn't die, so, you know. She's not a great example for that. But the idea is to kind of figure out who's good in this situation. Who's not? Flying is pointless because you're not allowed to leave the island. Everything has to be from the island. So you can't do that. It's just we're making them play by the same rules as John because John is a human. That's all. So who would you rather be? Now let's assume... Let's, let's be fair about John as well. This is not John Toho, perfect specimen. This is John Everyman. This is, a, this is the most average kind of guy you can think of. Not too muscular, but not out of shape. Plays a little bit of sport. Kind of physically active. Knows a little bit of things. He's not a complete shut-in. So, he he is... We're working with the most basic, average man in existence. In other words, any anime protagonist you've ever can, you could think of. That's our main character. Okay? So, this is just the, the importance. This is the importance to remember what's going on here. Because we're trying to establish the parameters we're working with. And that's what we're going to work with. So... With that said, we're gonna start right away. So number one, Letty White Rock, Kotohime. All right, so what do we already know? Kotohime would be useless. Now, that's a little bit speculation on my part more than anything, but as we know, she is an enigmatic lady who may be part of the upper uh, upper class, and she also pretends to be a police officer. And I'm assuming that because she is of a higher status, that she is not one to be self-sufficient. And so I'm assuming she is not helpful in that regard. Letty, on the other hand, uh, Letty is more or less not going to help you unless you're trapped on this island in winter. In which case, if you are, you're probably dead. So, cool. But Letty is known to not be a part of any season but winter, so she probably wouldn't even really be there in any capacity at all. So you have to wonder who's more relevant here. The character who's going to do nothing for you unless you are freezing in the wintertime on this island, or the character who may or may not just handcuff you to a palm tree because she thinks it's funny. That's what we're working with here. So, based on this information, I don't know. They're... Letty, I don't think would be terrible, but I think it's the fact that she's restricted outside of a season 
And we didn't really establish a season. And I can't just say winter now because winter is awful. Winter is absolutely awful. So I would prefer the weather to be conditions that you could actively survive outside without too much covering. So, you know, spring, summer. More so leaning into summer. Hmm. So based on my opinion, and my opinion alone, I would say I would go with Kotohime. Because Letty in the winter, she doesn't have a way to stop you from getting cold. She just has a way of using cold. That's all. Raiko and Miko. Alright. So. I don't really know how helpful Raiko would be. Because you gotta think about it like this, chat. Are they good at getting food? Are they good at building? Like, what are their strengths that can apply to this situation? Raiko can play the drums. And that's all I got. That's all I got. Miko? Now, Miko... Miko's not a delegator. Alright? She's respectable. She's not a delegator. She's not gonna make John do everything. Alright? That's important to know. How useful she will be, how many how practical her skill set is, actually might be there. Because remember, the story of Prince Shotoku is he was originally born in like a stable. So, to some extent, granted, I don't know how much, he has knowledge of working as like, you know, in a stable. Which it's not obviously one-to-one -to, -one to work, uh, surviving on an island, but she does at least, in, in that case, could understand more basic, fundamental skills for things that would be helpful in this situation. More so than, uh... More so than Raiko. The Imperial Palace Stable. A stable nonetheless. A stable nonetheless. So Miko and Miko's unshakable charisma would be great for keeping you motivated to hang in there. Raiko, on the other hand, she can play her drums. And that's, uh... I think that's all she really has. Hmm. I want her to domesticate the monkeys. And we can make the monkeys. Raiko has lightning. Actually, you're right. You're right. You're right. Raiko can summon lightning. And lightning is a very good way to make a fire, which is extremely important. That's... That's pretty good, actually. I think... Hold on. I think Raiko's pretty good here, based entirely on the fact that she can make fire. Miko can't make fire. Hmm... I don't know. I don't I don't know if I trust Miko's skills to be better than fire personally. I think I got to go with the fire. Okay. All right. So, this is not a hard one. Yorigami Shion and <laughs> So, Shion cannot do anything. She cannot do anything. And anything she tries to do will result in n misfortune. Meanwhile, Chen is probably pretty good at catching fish. So that's great. But her other skills would be not very high. But you could at least rely on her to do something. Xion would destroy everything by accident. So she is, she is just not a good idea. That nothing outweighs Xion. Xion's existence near you is, is going to make everything that John does just not work. It's just not, it's not going to work. Dayose and Mai. Okay, so... I have no idea what Mai does, except dance. I don't know what practical skills she has at all, if any. But she knows how to dance. Dayose... I don't know about Diose either. However, Diose is Diose is in tune with nature, so she would know where to find stuff to eat. You know, she would know how to find 
uh, plants and fruit and stuff like that to eat. And also, I've always pictured Dai as the more responsible fairy, so she probably knows how to do things. Of course, that's my own bias speaking more than anything of my idea of the character. But even if you take away my idea of the character, the fact remains she is a fairy, and they're pretty good at this sort of thing. So, she would be very helpful, especially compared to my. Kyoko and Mailing. Alright, so Kyoko is naturally from the mountains, so she definitely has an idea of how to scavenge. But an island might be a different beast. She's also loud. However, Mailing is not only capable of protecting from any dangerous entities on the island, she also definitely knows how to cook, and she probably has a pretty good idea on how to gather materials and such, as, you know, her job even as gatekeeper. She probably knows how to make firewood, so... She would not be as helpful in the sense of finding food, but I think the physical labor department, she would be absolutely phenomenal, and she would be able to protect me. I mean, John. <laughs> I mean, John. From Big Bad, Big Bad Monsters. So, John will, you know, it'll be great. Great day to be John. So, I gotta give it to Mei Ling based on her capabilities in physical labor protection. She makes you feel safe. Sho and Toyohime. So, if you were trapped on an island with Toyohime, I don't know what she would do. I have no idea what she would do. What does she do? She'll just sit there She'll just sit there. But then what? Like, what What does she do? I, I genuinely not sure what she does. All I know about her is that she sits around, eats peaches, speaks in a way that other characters who are smart speak, and then is actually absurdly powerful to a broken degree. And that's all I know about the character. And somehow this... Somehow these aspects made her... I'm, just, uh, I'm not gonna bother. It's not worth the time. It's not worth the time. Either way, you can't put her on Earth anyway because, you know. You know. Sho, on the other hand, Sho is a wild beast. Used to be. Now she is. She's an avatar of Beast Shimon. She can probably cook. Uh, I don't know how she is with fires. Does she have her pagoda? I don't know. She has a spear. That's helpful. How good is she in the wilderness? I have to assume decently enough, but she might be out of practice. She is a beast yokai after all. Or at least she was. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Toyohime is not going to find peaches on the island. That's not what she's going to do. I think I'd trust Sho. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything, I don't really know what Toyohime would do in this situation. Because we have to consider the fact that if Toyohime found herself off the moon, full of impurity, she'd probably just melt. Like the thin-skinned bitch she is. But we're not, you know, nobody's ready for that conversation. Show! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now this right here is a delegator. This is important. So, Cherno. Cherno's great at keeping you good temperature. She could probably freeze some fish. She's a fairy, so she probably knows something about vegetation, right? I hope. But I feel like for the most part, you'd be looking after her more than anything. Megamo, on the other hand, that that's right there. That's peak delegator. Megumu would expect John to do everything. And she herself, I have no idea what she would do. Except delegate. I don't trust her. My opinion of her is too low. I don't... Because she's a higher up. She's not familiar with the mountain. So, what, I, don't, I don't trust her ability to figure out what to do in a situation where she's stuck on an island. She won't be helpful at cooking. 
This won't be helpful at building. This won't be helpful at gathering. This won't be helpful in any capacity. She'll just set up her tripod and take pictures of shit. And then John will have to do all the work and will get no gratitude. Cherno, on the other hand, at the very least, you know, you can sit there and you can enjoy some fishies that she froze over the roaring fire that you may have made. You can just eat some frozen fishies. You gotta thaw them out, though. But if it's really hot or you get sick or something, she can cool you down. Can I take Cherno's wings and swing it, swing at the uh, people with them? I think Cherno is the correct dancer here, but even then, I don't think she's the greatest dancer. But she's better than Megumu. Parse and Sumireko. Oh man, neither of these characters. <laughs> oh no. Parsi would complain about everything. Like just everything. Her practical skills aside, I don't. I you know. Simireko, on the other hand, I don't think she understands how to do anything in this situation. But she's probably a little more bearable than Parsi. But I don't know if she'd be more helpful than Parsi. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think Simireko would be able to do very much. But she does have her psychonesis or whatever the fuck she's doing, I guess. Hmm. She can lift a fish out of the water. Grab crabs. She would probably complain a lot. And I think John would have to show her how to do everything. But the thing is, I don't actually know how good Parsi is at anything. But she would definitely complain a lot. And she would probably just get on your nerves after a while. Unless we're doing one of those fancy schmancy rom-com situations where... John and Parsi end up together at the end of the day because John is such a stand-up guy. I don't trust... A lot of what my opinion is on uh, Parsi's abilities is speculation more than anything. I don't trust it. So I have to give it to Sumireko. All right, so we got the pharmacist apprentice who can probably whip up medicine through whatever vegetation she could find, be able to understand and figure out which vegetation is safe, all kinds of things. Aces is very practical. Sega would probably just watch me die. <clears throat> I mean, John. Sega would probably just watch John die and not actually do anything at all. So, <laughs> my, my opinion of Sega is low here. I don't imagine Sega doing any work at all. I cannot, I cannot picture her doing anything in the slightest to help. Not a thing she can do. Nope. She wouldn't help with food, she wouldn't help with shelter, she wouldn't help with anything. Even if she suffers at the hands of it, she wouldn't do it. She'd just delegate. She's another delegator. She'd slap a fucking talisman on John's head and he'd have to go do it against his own free will. Fuck you. Grayson, on the other hand, I think she would have plenty of actual, uh, useful skills. Like I said earlier, her apprenticeship with Eden and, under and like, being able to identify uh, medicines and stuff like that, or just stuff that's safe for consumption, is very helpful. Her ability can dissuade any form of uh, danger from the wildlife. She's probably pretty good with a spear because bayonets. I I'm just guessing on that one though, because bunny gun. Uh, but yeah, no, I think her general her general attributes are much higher. She'd be a lot more helpful than Sega ever would. <clears throat> oh, good. Alright, Ebisu. Ebisu would be great at building a... a fireplace pit. And Sagame would do... I... 
I don't know what S Sagume would do, actually. I, I I have no idea what she would do. Would she do anything? She wouldn't even she wouldn't even be a good conversation partner. That might be the worst part. Like she would just like you you wouldn't be able to really engage in any conversation with her in your situation. You just simply be. You just simply be, and she'd expect you to do everything. Or if she did it, you know, she still wouldn't say anything. God, annoying. Eika's default. Wagasaki and Kaguya. Kaguya would do fucking nothing. Wagasaki's a little interesting though because, you know, she has to be in the water. And I'm sure she's a pretty good fisherman. So she can help in that regard. She can collect things from the ocean. That could be helpful, which is nice. But she would be limited to the ocean, so... You, you know, you're kind of... You, you kind of end up feeling alone, I suppose. I, I feel like you'd end up feeling alone because she'd always just be... She'd never be around. She'd be in the water. John had to do everything himself. But she would be helpful more than Kaguya. I don't think Kaguya would do anything at all. She would just sit there. Like, she wouldn't know how to cook. She wouldn't know how to catch, gather, build. She wouldn't be able to do anything. Hmm. I do think Wagasaki would be a little lonely, but I think she'd be very helpful. And she also would probably be a better conversation partner than Kaguya. Okay, well this is a no-brainer. Yuka... Yuka's not gonna do anything, as far as I can tell. And if she does, it's gonna be for her own sake, not yours. Sakuya, on the other hand... Well, I mean, her whole job is everything you could possibly want in this situation. She can handle so much with so little. So, she's kind of a no-brainer. Hmm. For Remy. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. She can do it for Remy. Okay, but what if the reward for surviving is something for Remy? Then she'd probably be more cooperative, right? Think of it like that. She'd be very helpful. Okina and Tokiko. I don't really think Okina would do much of anything. She's a delegator. She is 100% a delegator. She would just sit in my back and make me have to do everything. And be like, aha, all according to my plan whenever anything happened. I mean John's back, not mine. Tokiko, on the other hand, is just a bird girl. That's, that's it. She's just a bird girl. Her skills are completely unknown. Her ability is completely unknown. So she just is. Was it would she be more helpful than Okina? She can't fly. She'd have to walk. Would she actually help? A situation where she's stuck here? What can she do? What can she do? Whatever it is, it's probably better than Tokiko. I just assume every character who has servants can't actually fend for themselves at all. In the environment where they could actually perish by not doing so. Obviously, if Okina is like, ha, ah, I'm very strong, I will fight you, okay. But being very strong doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to survive for like a week on an island, you know? She would say she can make her own island. Would she do it, though? She would, would she, would she do it? She'd probably dedicate all of her resources to doing it. And then she'd tell John about how having two islands is bad and you shouldn't have two islands. <laughs> That's what she would do. You know what, Tokiko, Tokiko likes books. Maybe Tokiko read something interesting in a book that would be helpful in our situation. I'm trusting in Tokiko over Okina. I don't trust Okina. I don't trust her. Okay, well, 
Evil Eye Sigma is uh, not alive. Momiji, now Momiji is, uh, what the fuck? Momiji's job requires her to be very, you know, savvy on the mountain. So, thank you, Zay, for the resub. I gotta burp again. <laughs> so, she's familiar with survival in a different area, but still general survivors for survival skills. Her ability to see very far, like, you know, her clairvoyance can be very helpful for detecting things. She's a strong fighter, so you don't have to worry about dangers. I have to assume she's probably decent enough at cooking and hunting, because she's a wolf. So, I'm putting a lot of stock in Momiji's general abilities here. I don't think... Momiji would be stronger than Raisin, but... Raisin is good at avoiding confrontation, where Momiji is good at ending. Well, actually, Momiji would be good at avoiding it too, because she can see it, but odds are she'd be the type to pick a fight with it. Just to actually properly deal with it. But I don't think she'd be a, a nearly as good as a, a gatherer for... Well, she'd be a good gatherer for edible stuff, I think. As Raisin. But Raisin would be able to detect or find stuff that's good for medicines. So, you know, healing properties. Stuff like that. Tsukasa... <laughs> Yeah, so Tsukasa's not a good idea. Tsukasa's, Tsukasa would tell you exactly what you need to do, and it would be great, but everything she does would lead to your demise. Which means, depending on how long you're stuck on that island, you're probably dead. So get you off the island, maybe, sure. But then you'll, whatever you're getting at the end of it is not going to be worth it because whatever you did with her help to survive is going to, you're going to have to pay back tenfold down the line. So, yeah, that's what she does. So, she's not trustworthy in that regard at all. Takane, on the other hand, is another one of those mountain experts who, while a different environment, is still probably general uh, a general knowledge of outdoor survival, which would be helpful. Also, because she's a kappa, she can still handle... She may have left the river, but that doesn't mean she can't handle water stuff. So she can do both on land and uh, and in the water. So she's very versatile in that regard. She's also probably good at building random shit with what she can find. And she might even have some stuff ahead of time. So Takane, I think, would be a very good pick. I think Takane would be extremely helpful in this situation. By the way, chat, I forgot to mention, the island in question we're working with here is something similar to, like, a very standard island. So you got a beach, uh, you got, like, a jungle forest-esque deal in the middle of the island, uh, and, you know, just, like, think very extremely general, commonplace, like, oh, you'd see that on a desert island kind of thing. We didn't really build our own, but we're just kind of taking default from here. Oh, Takane would be safer. Like I said about Tsukasa, what happens when you're done the whole event and you get out of there? You'll have to pay back her advice in some capacity, right? And then you'll really feel it. So it's not worth the not worth it if you know that. Futo. So Futo, I don't know if her ability would do anything for you. I also don't know if her ability is actually helpful or her skills are up to snuff for anything. Oh, it's native faith, okay. Yukari on the other hand, I don't know. Chat, is it cheating if Yukari opens her gap and pulls resources out from a different place? Because technically she's leaving the island, right? Like, she's if, if her arm stretches out and grabs something not on the island, that counts as leaving the island, right? Because she can't leave the island, that's the rule. You can't leave. But a gap coming out of a different place counts as leaving the island if her arm sticks out of it, right? Otherwise, she'd just kind of like grab everything you need. She'd just go 
arm, 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 and just pull out the whole fucking set, and you'd be okay. Like, you'd never have to do anything, because you can just pull out food from random places and be okay. Hmm. There's a lot of, uh, works that paint Yukari as a lazy schmuck, with Ron doing all the, all the work. I don't think she'd be very helpful if you limit her ability to just open gaps and take things from other places. But I also think her ability to do that would just completely defeat the purpose of island survival. So I would actually put her pretty low. Foto, on the other hand... You also, chat, you gotta think of it like this as well. You gotta think of it from the social aspect as well. Could you, um, let's, let's say for example, both these characters are equal in terms of their capabilities. But which one of these two do you want to sit there and eat coconuts over the campfire with? You gotta think of it like that, right? Who would be a more enjoyable person while, through the whole ordeal? So that, that's an aspect that we haven't talked too much about, but it has come up. Hmm. Yukari would just... Yukari's a bit of a cheater. It's weird because if, if you let Yukari do her ability, she's an obvious number one. But if you don't, then it's like there's not really much else she does. John has a bag over his head. He can, he can only communicate in head gestures, remember. I don't know if John can talk, or if he just chooses not to talk. He simply emotes, and everybody just understands it. I think it's funny for him to not talk, though. And whenever he, like, says words or has feelings, the character on his bag changes. So they always- and Sin Sacks just have a big character on the front of their bag, but you can just change that to illustrate the point. <laughs> That's fun. That's a fun idea. I like that idea. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's like Link. He speaks like Link. Everybody loves Link. He's awesome. I gotta go with Futo. I'm gonna... I'm gonna ban Yukari's ability to gap to places not on the island. Because that's... That counts as leaving the island. She could gap to places on the island as well, sure, but, you know... I don't know how useful that would be. It would be still, I mean, it would be useful, for sure, but, like, she can just kind of grab stuff that for easier, but she wouldn't really know how to cook it or anything. She'd just be able to gather materials at your feet, and then you'd have to figure it all out anyway. Ellen and Zanmu. All right, so, I don't know if Ellen has ever been in such a situation where she'd need to do something like this, and I highly doubt she'd be very helpful. Zamu, on the other hand, would just sit there and be like, hmm, yeah, it's all according to my plan. And John would just sit there and do nothing. And Zamu would be like, hmm, yeah, it's according to my plan. Very good, very good, yes. And then she would actively do nothing. She's a delegator. She's a delegator. She is absolutely a delegator. And I do not know what kind of practical skills she would have. Hmm. What would she do? What is her goal? You think? Oh, well. Windows Defender virus. What does Zanmu do in this situation? Does she set you, does she make you a fire? Does she catch me a fish? Does she find me a coconut? Is she an in engaging conversationalist? What does she do but sit there and expect John to do all the work because she's so much more important than him? Hmm? I don't know what she does. She's a monk? I don't know what the fuck she is. She's a human oni who is the ruler of hell or whatever. What does Ellen do, to be fair? I was getting to that. Ellen doesn't do anything. Ellen just kind of 
smiles. Ellen is useless. But when you really think about it, who are these two would you rather talk to for like a week? What does manipulating nothingness mean? I don't know. I don't know. Morale boost? Who's morale boosting you? Are you getting morale boosted by Ellen? Or are you getting morale boosted by Zanmu? Because if I was with Zanmu, I would just think about how much I didn't want to be with Zanmu. <laughs> Who's talking if John doesn't speak? John emotes, which means a character who's naturally a conversationalist works best with John. But we're talking about John Everyman. This is important. Hmm. You think Hisami's just gonna fucking plop out of the ground and do something? I have no idea. I don't trust Zamu to be very helpful, personally. Now, maybe maybe you're one of those guys who looks at Zamu and you're like, damn, I wish you would crush my balls. In which case, seek help. But, you know, it's... That doesn't, you know, it's not about ball crushing right now. It's about everything else. You're trying to survive, not get your willy wet. Come on now. This is this is important distinction. We're not trying. We're not trying to go in a blaze of glory. We're trying to make it to the to the to next day. That is so loud. Holy shit. Putting words in our mouth, okay. You want something else in your mouth, huh? Open up, boy. Open up, I'll give you something to put in your mouth, motherfucker. Watch your tone! <laughs> okay, all right. Chat, I can concede that Zamu would be more practically useful than Ellen. But I also think if I had to spend a month, sorry, if John had to spend a month with Zanmu, most of the work would probably fall to him, and Zanmu would not be very engaging. Well, that's just because I think, I mean, John thinks he's boring. <laughs> Ellen, however, Ellen is, you know, she's just a barrel of sunshine. She'll keep you going. Her, her smile will keep you going for days. It's very good. Yuki and Yumei. Okay, Yuki is a demon and she has fire magic, so she's automatically very helpful for that regard. Yumei, on the other hand, scientist, very smart, but I don't know how many, uh, like, survival skills she's picked up in her journeys. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think Yumemi is trained in the art of island survival with her big degree? Do you think she'd be able to do it? I don't think she would, because basically as far as I could tell, she's just like a, a normal human, but she's smart. She's not going to build a fucking time machine out of coconuts. But Yuki can literally, like, set a fire. Yuki can set a fire, which is instantly already better. So I got to give it to Yuki. Yumeko a maid -a. So Yumeko, much like Sakuya, is a maid, so she's already pretty equipped at dealing with, uh, good, you know... She's equipped with this kind of thing. She's good at this. maid -a, on the other hand, I don't know, she'd probably go slash a tree. And then, uh, nothing would really happen. Would she be good? I don't know. It's hard to say because nobody knows anything about Meta. And if you think you do, then you're lying to yourself. You made up a character in your head and you're pretending it's Meta. That is quite literally what Meta is. No, she's this, this, and this. No, she's not. No, she's not. She's not a character at all. Anything you think Meta is is your own head canon, And you've deluded yourself into thinking this is how she is in canon. It's not how it is. She chop wood with her katana. With her katana. Do you think you can make firewood with a katana? I don't think you could. Yumeko. Satan and Alice. Okay, so 
Satan is a soldier, so she probably has some practical uh, knowledge like Rayson does, so that could be helpful. Alice, on the other hand... I wish I could tell you. I, I wish I could tell you. Alice can do a lot of things. She can do a lot of things, provided she was allowed to bring her dolls with her. Otherwise, she's kind of worthless. Hmm. Hmm. Satan does build her own home, yes. She sets up uh, her own home, but Alice also built her own home, I think. I don't recall anything saying Alice moved into the Forest of Magic. I think Marissa did. I think Marissa just found a house and moved in, but I think Alice built her house from scratch. But she just kind of... She's good at meticulous work. And she has her dolls, which she uses for a lot of stuff, so she's really- she has fi very fine motor skills. She'd also be a better conversationalist than Satan, because Satan is a germaphobe, because, you know, moon rabbit. But I do think Satan's, like, survival skills are not as good as Rayson's, but they're probably some- There's probably some, like, that moon rabbit training, but at the same time, the moon is different from the Earth, so things might not really be one-to-one. -one. But Rayson has had, had experience on Earth more than Satan has, so... Mm. The thing is, though, chat, the more I think about it, I'm, I'm pretty sure my bias is making me want to pick Alice. I'm trying to think of reasons why Satan is a good idea, but every fiber of my bean says I'd rather be with- I mean, John would rather be with Alice. So, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to it's hard to fight that natural natural urge, desire. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hmm. Chat, I have to pee again. I'll be right back. So stick around for another. Alright, chat. Chat? Chat, be honest with me. If I click Alice here, would you really argue against it? Do you... Do you have a ground to stand on that says Satan is the better choice here? Do you? Do you truly... Hmm? Hmm? Uh, it's- it's not about bi- It's not about bi- It's not! It's not about bias! It's about Satan- Satan is a- You know, she- she's a germaphobe. 
to Earth Germs. She's probably not the greatest character in the world to talk to. Alice, on the other hand, she's more focused on her dolls, more sure, so she wouldn't be the easiest to talk to either, but at least she wouldn't look at you and be like, ew, Earthling, every five seconds, you know? Hmm. Santa isn't racist anymore? Not entirely true. The whole point of Tall 19 was she was looking for her gem because it purified the area around her so she could build a home in a purified space because she hates the Earth's impurities. That's a very important distinction. Hmm. Did you forget Toho 19's entire story for her? Did you forget? Why did you forget? How did you forget? Why did you forget? She loves Earth. Yeah, that's why she went seeking her fucking gem to purify his space to build her home because it was yucky. Yeah, all right. Whatever you say. I'm clicking Alice. I'm clicking Alice. I'm clicking her. I clicked her. All right. Renko and Gengetsu. Okay, so Renko has the cool ability to figure out exactly what time it is and where she is based on the stars and the moon. And that's helpful because... Anyway, Gengetsu is... Uh... Alright, so I guess between these two, I'd probably give it to Renko. Just because Renko is probably a little more likely to know how to deal with the situation. And she'd be better equipped for it. Meanwhile, Gengetsu is... Um... Um, yeah. Lyrica and Keiki. Alright, so this one's great. So, Lyrica may not be the best at practical uh, help, but she would be a... Her music doesn't influence people as like her sisters does, so she would be good for some, you know, just some tunes. And also, she's probably a good conversationalist. However, Keiki can build... She can build soldiers. So they can do the work. She's a different kind of delegator. The problem is, I don't know if Keiki's soldiers can move without a soul within them. That's what I'm not sure about. Because as far as I can tell, Keiki showed up in the human realm. Within the animal realm, the human area. And the souls of the humans inhabited her sculptures to fight back. I don't know if she's able to have them operate on their own without a soul inside of them. And they're not getting John's soul. So I'm, I'm not really sure how that works. I'm not even really sure why Mayumi stands out so much. Uh, compared to the other ones. All the other Haniwas look like actual Haniwas, and then Mayumi just like looks like a person. How did that happen? Can she use fish souls? I don't think she can. I'm pretty sure she can only use the souls of uh, humans. At the very least, the soul- the humans are the only ones who's like actually offered up their souls to go inside of these things anyway. Because, you know, they were fighting against the- the uh, cruelty of the animal realm because they were- the humans were always treated with such garbage by the animals and then Keiki kind of popped in and was like I'll give you a way to fight back so yeah hmm she didn't make the horses yeah that's true I want to believe that to a certain extent she can create things that actually uh, work but how effective they are is unknown she would be more helpful in that regard so, I think Keiki is probably more reliable than Lyrica. But Lyrica is the kind of character that if you just, you know, if you're gonna, if you're just gonna, like, if you think you're okay alone, then she's a good, just, person to distract you from the crippling loneliness of being trapped on a deserted island. Make you a boat? Yeah, but the point is we're not trying to escape, remember? The point is survival, not escape. Because if it was escape, everybody would just fucking fly away. You have to survive. She can make me a fishing rod. Oh, wait, yeah, she can be actually, I forgot. She can just create tools in general that would be very helpful. 
even just the Haniwa aside, she could create all kinds of helpful tools. Yeah, no, definitely her. Kutaka and Mima. This may be kind of rude, but... I feel like Mima is the kind of person who would just laugh at you if you were starving on a beach. If you were just like, I'm dying, Squirtle, she'd just be like, hee hee haha. And it's like, well, that's great. Thanks, Mima. She would take great pleasure in watching you just, you know. You can cook and eat Kutaka. Why would you want... Okay, you know what? My, my mouth was moving, my brain was going somewhere else, and I decided that we needed to sever the connection. That's what I decided. <laughs> in in that moment. In that moment. In that moment. In that moment. I, I won the battle. I won the battle against myself. Okay. So. Kutaka. The bird yokai don't actively like when others eat the birds. They don't like that very much. Uh, but other animals are fair and fair game. Kutaka's ability would be great though, because healing sore throats, sore throats can happen a lot. Especially if you're not sleeping with in proper, proper covering. You know, you wake up and you get a sore throat from that kind of deal. So having her be able to take care of that would be fantastic. Also, she's actually, despite what you may like think about her by what you see, she does have a pretty important role at, at working for the Yama, so she's pretty responsible and probably decently smart. But it's hard to say how well those the, the attributes translate to actually doing much of anything than being a essentially a vegetarian equivalent here, just preventing you from eating birds. You know what? I bet her wings are really warm, and if you got, you know, if you got close enough to her, she would probably keep you warm, and that would be great, and John would love that. I can vouch for John. Me and him, are, we're like brothers. But, you know, having nice fluffy aspects that are nice and warm, it's pretty good. John doesn't talk, he can't get a sore throat. Have you never woken up with a sore throat before? You think you talk in your sleep and you make that shit sore? Come on now. What if the reason John doesn't talk is because his throat is perpetually sore? And Kutaka's like, here you go, and John's like, thank you. But he sounds like, he sounds like handsome Squidward looks. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how he sounds. <laughs> his voice is like smooth butter. It's so good. But then immediately his throat plugs back up and he just he can't talk anymore. He gets like one word. Uh, no, okay, but ser seriously though, Mima, Mima is not like gonna do anything for you. I don't think she's she's one of those she's one of those characters that you look at and she's like mm, need a bad bitch to fuck up my life, and then you put her on a deserted island with someone and it's like mm, that bad bitch is fucking up my life, and suddenly it ain't so hot anymore, is it? Uh, -uh I didn't think so. Kusaka, on the other hand, is you know she just look at that look at her face. You can tell by her face that she is a good-hearted person, and she would do all she could to help you. And that, that's all I needed in these crushing moments out in the wilderness. Alright, well this is not a very hard one to hear. If, if Mia Deguchi, Mia Deguchi would not do much of anything. In fact, I have a feeling she'd probably just complain and bitch and moan and then possess like a monkey and then throw shit at me because she would find that funny. I don't know. I don't fucking know this character. Who knows this character? <laughs> Who is this character? This character is rude and mean and angry. So why would she want to survive anything? And then Sanai. So Sanai obviously caretaker at the shrine. Fairly knowledgeable about random things. 
How much of those would be practical? I have a feeling she'd probably know basic survival stuff. I could trust her on that front. But she would be more dependable because she's quite the dependable woman. So there's that. I mean, John would depend on her because he, she is quite the dependable woman. And she would make that clear. Now, she might be a little pushy and might try to take the charge most of the time. And that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. As long as she knows what she's doing. I don't know if she'd be the type to panic. She might be the type to panic if things don't go as exactly as she expects right out the gate. But I think for the most part, she would have a pretty decent idea of what needs to be done based on what whatever she learned in the outside world. And also her abilities can conjure up things like rain and, uh, and stuff. So a supply of clean drinking water via raindrop gathering in the event that there's no like water or clean water source on the island is also very good because that's something that I haven't really thought about just assuming there's a, a source of clean water on the island being able to just conjure up rain like that for rainwater would be quite helpful hmm I think I think she would be I mean compared to Miyaguchi she's obviously way more uh, helpful but even just in general I think she's pretty impressive so star and Rayson so Rayson is useless, as we all know. Star is pretty helpful because A, she's a fairy, again, as we've already established, fairies are in tune with nature. But Star herself is actually great because she's, you know, she's basically a living radar. She can detect living creatures, so she is very good for hunting. But also, she's also just good at gathering, like, vegetation and stuff like that. So... As far as food goes, you'd be pretty set. However, there is no chance she would do much of anything regarding physical labor. But she would at least be very, very helpful at, uh, at gathering food and whatnot. Would she actually help you, though? Well, she would help you because it would help her. Because she can gather vegetables, but if she, with John... As long as John knows where an animal is, John can, you know, catch it and deal with it, right? So that way, they share the food, essentially. As a result, they both get to eat some meat and some veggies. And all Star has to do is point John in the right direction. And I think that compromise would have Star cooperate. I think that, that would be the case. Wouldn't Rayson have survival training? Probably not because she just became she just became a soldier like She was a regular moon rabbit who just pound mochi and then when she handed a letter to the Watatskis They took her in as a pet, so she's essentially in training so she would not How much training she would have at that point is debatable sure But she definitely would not have the same level of training as race and Ringo and Satan would because she's so new to the corpse because of her situation But I don't think she'd be very helpful because how could she be? Kosasi and Nemuno. So, as much as I like Kozuzu, Kozuzu is definitely one of those. I read this in a book before and then tried to emulate it, and pretty good chance that whatever it is she read, she fucks up. Nemuno, on the other hand, is used to living in solitude, living off the land in the mountains. And she comes equipped with her own big fucking machete. So, you know, she's, she's a certified hunter right out the gate. She knows how to find water. She's probably great at gathering vegetation. So, there's... A, and I'm pretty sure Yamamba build their own houses as well. So, she's got some skills at that. Basically, Nemono is kind of perfect for this situation. Even if the environment is different. But she can handle pretty much everything required for outdoor survival. And she's done it alone for so long that she can pretty, probably pretty easily care for another as well. Because that's also how the mountain hags work as well. And they take in children and raise them. Sure, John isn't a child, but the general idea is still there. Because this is the type of thing you build shelter in Minecraft by punching trees so you can right up and punch tree and punch it. I don't necessarily agree. However, that is a funny ass fucking mental image. So I appreciate the comment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she would know not to punch a tree to create wood. But she would have read a book about how to produce, uh, you know, procure wood from a tree. And she would try to find an axe 
and she wouldn't be able to get one because where are you gonna find an axe? You're gonna make it yourself with stone, Luigi. A stick and stone. But she would be pretty knowledgeable with all the stuff she's read, I think. But Nemono has, like, book smarts versus street smarts here. Kosuzu may know how to do everything by reading it, but Nemono has actually done it for years. So she's actually a pretty, pretty high tier pick here for sure. And I'm pretty sure she's probably a pretty decent conversationalist when you get to know her. I don't imagine she wouldn't be. I think Nemono is a hot tier pick here. Our high tier pick. New A Mugetsu. So, Mugetsu is a character we don't know anything about, other than that her the fact that she's dressed as a maid is because she's a weirdo with a a hat a hobby. But she's not actually a maid at all. So her skills in that step uh, sense are completely unknown. Nue is probably about as helpful as you expect. However, she does come equipped with a trident, which is very good at hunting fish. But otherwise, uh, I don't know what Nue does. Nue seems like she would just fuck with you and not actually help in any way, shape, or form. I don't really trust her to help. That's the problem I have with Nue. But Mugetsu is a, is a complete unknown. So it's kind of like... It's kind of like taking the boat versus taking the mystery box. You don't know what's in the mystery box. Could be a boat. But it could also be something worse than a boat. So Mugetsu is a bit of a wild card in that sense. And it's hard to really say for sure. But would you rather, would you rather bet on a possible than a, a guarantee here? Where the possible is that Mugetsu is better... But it's guaranteed that Nue is bad, you know? I don't know how much worse Mugetsu would be than Nue, but there's still a chance Mugetsu would be more helpful than her. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think Nue would be much of a team player is the problem. I really don't. Much as I, 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 I like her, I don't think it would be a good idea to trust her on any capacity. She's a bastard through and through. Joshka and Doremi. Okay, so Doremi's skills, practical skills, are pretty unknown since she pretty much only shows up in the dream world and what she does in the dream world does not really matter for survival. Yoshka, on the other hand, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know what you would do with Yoshka because you have to think of it like this. Can you, does Yoshka have free will or is she, her talisman programmed ahead of time? Like, how, how exactly does she work in this situation? A lot of the... Pretty much everything that Yoshka does is at the command of Sega via the talismans on her forehead. And whenever she doesn't have one, she's kind of just a husk of what she was with a very slight idea of... Or slight memory. Very slight actions that she performs that are kind of based on when she was alive and not what she's known about that. Yeah, I don't think Yoshka's very helpful here. I think just based on the fact that Doremi can actually, like, move around of her own free will, automatically puts her up higher than Yoshka. And, yeah, Doremi would help- Doremi- I don't know if Doremi would help you get to sleep, but if she could, you know, show up in your dreams, I guess. That's, I don't really know, though. Udemi and Suiko. Alright, so, Udemy, she's retired, she's a fisher, and that's all I really got. I don't have much else for her. Suiko, on the other hand, is a god. She's a natural, na the, you know, native god to the Sua province, goddess uh, of earth, curse gods. The question is, how... How good is she at just, you know? What does Suiko do to help? What can she do to help you in this situation? Can she fish? Can she gather? Can she cook? Can she build? What exactly does Suiko do? Udemy is at least a fisherwoman, you know? She, she fishes. She can fish. She's good at that. Hmm. 
she manipulated the earth to make a shelter? You know what? You might be right. You know the move in Hisotensoku where she like summons the giant stone frog? What if she just pulls the earth up and forms like an earth igloo? So she just like builds you a little hut made of the earth. But wait a minute, what about the sand? You wouldn't be able to do it on the beach, right? Because of the sand, so you'd have to be a little further in the forest for the actual ground. That'd be kind of cool. And that would take care of your shelter issue, like, indefinitely, because you could always make a shelter anywhere you want. Which means you can effectively go anywhere on the island and, like, set up camp right then and there without having to go back to where your shelter was. So she's extremely versatile in the nomad style of moving around the island. That's actually pretty good, actually. I don't know, chat. What do you think? Suiko's ability to basically park anywhere you want on the island and set up shelter there, or Udemy's ability to throw a fishing rod in the water and pull a fish out. But that's not really ability. That's something that anyone can do. I don't think Udemy can pull out a frog-shaped shelter for you to crawl into and sleep for the night. Just saying. Just saying. Can she make tools? Oh, well, okay. Well, so give him more points to Suiko. I don't know if she can just make tools, but she could probably get a pretty decent chunk of things uh, in a proper shape. But you still need to attach it to a stick with a sturdy, uh, sturdy way, right? Unless she crap. Actually, if she can make a sophisticated frog sculpture, what's stopping her from just making a rock that looks like an axe? I never thought of that. I never thought of that. What if she just pulls out an axe completely made of stone? And you can just use that to chop trees. <laughs> okay. I don't know if she can get as sophisticated as that, but we do know from Hisotensuku that she can, in fact, manipulate the earth and shape it in a way that she sees fit. In which case, froggy. So, yeah. I think Suiko is the answer here. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, this is actually really easy, but I'm surprised this popped up. I don't think I've ever seen these two against each other. So, Rainbow is a spoiled brat who eats dirt. Marissa has been fending on her own in a poisonous forest for years. That's, n that's pretty no-brainer. That's a pretty fucking no-brainer right there. Okay, Rainbow has survived on literally nothing, though. Dude, why is Luna Knight so loud? Just because she survived on nothing doesn't mean anything, though. She ate an expired fucking red bean manju and almost died. Marissa, on the other hand, can identify, uh, like, mushrooms that are safe to eat and mushrooms that are dangerous. So, she's been living that solo lifestyle for a long time. Hmm. No, Marissa wouldn't feed you poisonous mushrooms. That's, that's idiotic to say. Why would she do that? She's extremely uh, capable in that regard. She knows, she knows the forest mushrooms. She's been living off them all her life. She knows how to identify good ones that can be ed are edible and ones that aren't. I would trust her opinion more than Raymond. Raymond would eat the fucking dirt. Hmm. Raymond would not be a team player, I don't think. I don't think she'd be a team player. Also, much as it pains me to say it, not really pains me to say it, but Marissa is definitely a better conversationalist than Raymu. You'd much rather hang out with Marissa than Raymond. Even if I'm a big, bigger Raymond fan than Marissa. Marissa is generally more helpful and approachable than Reimu is, for sure. So Reimu is actually kind of a bottom tier pick here. Marissa, on the other hand, is solid in her survival skills. Hmm. This is the only time I'll, uh, probably the only time I'll ever pick Marissa over Reimu. Okay, well, I don't know what to do about this one because this one is, uh... 
What? What do I? What do I pick here? <laughs> Mimi Chan is just not gonna do anything. It's just a missile. One wrong move and it blows the whole fucking island up. Meanwhile, Yuga Magan. Yuga Magan is uh, a a bunch of floating eyeballs that can't talk. How do I feed it? Hmm. Chat, how do I feed it? Hmm. Mimi could get you off, and that's it. So. You're lucky that a comet like that can just, you know, slide without anyone reading it. But because I read it out, now you've now now people are aware. Now people are aware of the way you said that. <laughs> I, I chat. All I did was read his message. All I did was read his message. That's it. I didn't say anything different. I just read his message. But that shit was about to slide under the radar and nobody was gonna see it. So I just brought attention to it. <laughs> Don't you fucking dare tell me what message. Open your eyes. It's it's there. Open your fucking eyes. Don't do this. Don't lie to me. See, Yuga Magan is the better pick just based on the fact that, it, that he won't blow the fucking thing up. The thing is, I don't know what Yuga Magan would really do, but maybe he could start a fire. But he really is just a bunch of floating eyeballs, and I don't know how to feed him. So, like, he, and he also wouldn't be able to talk. But it's better than, like, Mimi Chan is basically your fucking crazy equivalent of the hand volleyball, you know, from that movie. The, the, the volleyball with the fucking hand face on it. That's what Mimi Chan is, except it can blow the fuck up if you mess up. So, you know. We'll just, we'll just trust our, we'll trust our eyes. Haha, <laughs> get it? Okay, well, now, uh, Jun is, <laughs> Jun is not what I call savvy in the art of, uh, survival. She's, uh, she's a delegator, for sure. But she might know how to cook, maybe a little bit. She might get a taste of that. Uh, she might get a taste of that modest lifestyle she's been so eager to find. But I think early on she would be nothing more than a pain in the ass. Hmm. But you know, things might change. You never know. Yatsuhashi. I don't think she has anything in the way of practical skills, mind you. She can play a nice tune. But otherwise, she's just kind of... She's kind of a girl who can play music. She's not going to have any real innate skills. This is not about me, it's about Jean. Jean as she is, is worrying. But... Jun would eventually have to come around and un like actually have to do something, which may be exactly what she needs. However, Yatsuhashi would be more immediately helpful, and you wouldn't have to play around with her for like a fucking week before she finally understands the, the situation they're in. So, you know. So I would honestly say that y Yatsuhashi is... Yatsuhashi is the better pick immediately, but Jun's strength is more helpful in the long run even though her attitude is just not helpful at the beginning that's that's really what it fall, comes down to is that you'd have to wait for her to actually be helpful whereas Yatsuhashi would at least try to be helpful right away mm -mm. Mm. Chad, I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to put my biases aside and think, you know, uh, and think about this 
the way I am. But it's hard to say for sure because we never establish a time frame. Now, if you were only there for a week, Yasuhashi is the better pick for sure. If you were there for a month, I think in the long run, Jun will be more helpful. Assuming she comes around and understands the situation they're in. But it's hard to say for sure. Hmm. What do you think, chat? What do you think? Doesn't matter what you think, of course, but what do you think? No, I never established a time frame. I said it could be a week, two weeks, a month, whatever. I didn't I didn't lock in a date. I kept it open specifically because if we think about it based on how much time there is locked in, things kind of change. But if you kind of keep it open-ended, we can have conversations like this, where their, their usefulness is can vary based on how long you'll be stuck. Looking to do the island stack grind. Thank you, little yellow berry for the raid. Appreciate it. Oh, I don't know, chat. I don't know. Because <clears throat> like I said, Yatsuhashi doesn't really have any established skills, especially within kind of... Especially within like what we're talking about here, whereas Jun is probably not that much better. But if if I needed Jun's help to fight off a bear, I would be more you know, I mean John. Sorry, <laughs> I mean John. If John needed help fighting off a bear, for whatever reason, there's a bear on this island. Whatever. Jun would be immediately more helpful than Yatsuhashi would. However, Yatsuhashi would play some nice music, which, yeah, that's always good. That's always good. Oh, okay, chat. I'm gonna give it. To, I'm gonna give it to Yatsuhashi. Oh man. Okay. Uh, Yuma and the Great Catfish. So, Yuma. Delegator. <laughs> but not really a delegator. I don't know. She'd probably be pretty okay with anything. But she would probably eat a pretty big portion of food. So she would be kind of annoying. And I don't know how helpful she'd be in other skills. The great catfish, on the other hand, he's uh, he's a fish. He's a, he's a giant catfish, and that's all I got. I, I You can't eat him. Chat, stop, stop trying to eat the fucking character. What are you doing? What are you, why, why are you going to eat him? You think you're going to be able to eat him? How are you going to eat him? You'll get near him, and he will sense your intent, and then you will be flattened, like that Squidward meme. When his fucking wax sculpture gets absolutely smushed by Patrick Dumpy. That's, that's what happens to you if, you if you try to eat them. Yeah, Yuma can fight, but what else can Yuma do except eat hot chip and lie? Well, I mean, she's not really a liar per se, but she would eat a lot of your food, and that is definitely annoying. But, you know, it depends how helpful her other skills are. Do you think she can use her giant spoon as like a, a, a fishing net? What if she just swung her spoon in the water and like caught a fish? Wouldn't that be great? That'd be kind of cool. I think it's probably more helpful than the great catfish though. <laughs> I think it's more helpful than the great catfish. Because the great catfish is just, I mean, he's just a, he's not, he's not even real chat. He's a, he's a fucking, he's not even a real character. He's a figment of Mailing's like imagination in a dream. In fact, the only other time he shows up in canon is when you're fighting Dream Tenshi. Hence, he's tr he's a dream. He's not part of the real world. <laughs> he can't actually do anything for you. <laughs> no, he's not real. He's always been in a dream, Snake Eater, dude. 
Now, he, there is a, a possibility that he exists in the real world, and this is a dream form, but I think what it is is it's just it's a figment of Mei Ling's imagination, given life from the manga she read. He's as real as everyone else? You take that back. You fucking take that back right now. <laughs> that is not, you can't say that. That's, that's forbidden, that's forbidden. Fuck you. <laughs> you can't say that. I'm picking Yuma. Alright. Alright. Uh, Chieri and Mamizo. So Chieri is like 15 years old. Or 17 years old. I can never remember. Uh, and she wears a sailor suit, but she is definitely not a sailor. She has a gun, and that's about it. There's nothing else that we really know about her. Mamizo, on the other hand, is... She's the boss of the Tanuki, and the Tanuki, as you know, are, uh, you know, they live out in the wilderness. So there's some, there's some survival a aspects to that as well. She's obviously very long-lived as well. The only thing that really makes her a bit obnoxious is that her, as a Tanuki, she's probably gonna play a lot. She's not probably gonna fuck with you a lot. But at the very least, you could probably trust that she's not gonna kill you. But she might might grab you some plants that cause crippling diarrhea just because it's funny but also she could be beyond such petty tricks and just have her eye on the prize based on what the prize for survival actually is it really depends on what it is she gets out of it so you could trust her depending on the reward but if she's participating then obviously the reward is worth something to her so but you can probably count on that right hmm I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the guy in question here, you know, if we're talking about John, but me personally, who's not John, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to hang out with this character either, but for John's survival, if it, if, if she'd be more helpful than Shieri, I gotta acknowledge that, you know, you gotta acknowledge that, it is what it is, Maribel and Luna, I don't know what Maribel would do, exactly, because she really is just a college girl who can see, like, holes in the fabric of reality every now and again. But that is not going to feed me. Luna, on the other hand, great company. Can, you know, fairy, good good gatherer, not so much hunter. But she can help be helpful for hunting because while uh, Star can give you radar, Luna can let you be completely silent so you can be, you know, more effective at getting close to your target. Which is probably pretty helpful when you're not very good at distance or have something that can close distance fast. But, you know, I think she'd be pretty helpful. Honestly, a Sunny hasn't come up yet, but as far as hunting goes, Honey would, uh, Honey. Sunny would actually be the worst because even though you wouldn't be able to see, uh, you know, Prey animals like that would react to sounds, so they would still bolt off even if they don't see anything. Whereas Luna can completely mask your, so your sound, and Star can give you the idea where they are. Whereas Sunny's just kind of, there's no point in going invisible, you know. Unless you're already just walking around invisible anyway, for whatever reason. Hmm. Honey milk. <laughs> Ibaraki, Kasen, and Yamame. Okay, so, Yamame? Let's talk about Yamame first. Hmm. Yamame is poison aside. She's a certified carpenter, so she's very good at building, and she produces her own, like, her webs are very sturdy, so she can produce her own, like, string for binding. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. You could attach rocks to sticks to create tools. You can make a fishing rod. You can obviously like build. Uh, she can build a lot of things. Like she's very, very good with that. How helpful she is in other regards is unknown. But at the very least, she's a builder. And she produces half of the material required anyway. So that's great. 
Yamame can inflict disease, yes, but it's an ability completely within her power, and it's not something she just does willy-nilly. So you're not gonna just catch... You're just not gonna catch Giga... Giga flu by being around her. She just... That's something that she does to people. But she can actively choose not to do it, and it's something she actively chooses not to do to a lot of people. But her reputation is that she can do it, and she will do it, so... That's why she's underground, you know, hated yokai and all that, right? Thank you for the raid, Christian. I've been live for like eight hours. And I am dead. Ugh. Ugh. I'm drinking my water now, chat. Don't worry, I'm drinking my water. I am chillaxing. Although I'm definitely I'm definitely taking the night, like, off. I don't relax tonight. Okay, so. Yamame established. Let's talk about Kassen. Chat. What does Kassen do? Can Kassen cook? She can. She actually can. We've seen, we've seen that in Wildhorn Hermit. She can, in fact, cook. And she's good at cooking with ingredients that just exist in nature. Since she lives on the mountain. So, that's a positive. Can she build? I don't know, but she's probably got some form of uh, knowledge to that. Would she be really annoying? Yes. She, her, uh, her sake dish has healing properties that when you drink sake out of it, it heals you up, but you need sake for it, which is the important part. And then you're, you know, you get the aggression of an Oni, which is like, ooh. But she'll probably have sake, because I'm pretty sure she said in that chapter in Wildhorn Hermit that her her cup basically lets, uh, you know, Sanai asks if that, uh, drinking that cup, never, why that cup never heals her arm. And Sanai says, or Kassen says that the, drinking the sake out of the cup won't actually heal her arm. But I think she makes an offhand remark about how if she didn't drink from that cup, then her arm would probably, like, decay. Or would cease to be or something like that. So I think that her drinking from that cup is kind of what keeps her arm, her ghost arm, in the state that it's in. Now, as you know, in the end of Wildhorn Hermit, spoiler, 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 uh, she does reunite with her arm. And I... Pretty sure she still has it after the events of Wildhorn Hermit. I don't think she cut it off again, but she kind of like... I don't know. I don't remember exactly what she did with the arm, but that was kind of the whole plot point at the end of it. So, that means if she was on this island with you, she probably would have enough sake for herself specifically to keep her arm in check. Which means I don't know how much she'd be able to share with John. But she would probably have something akin to that, so you could rely on that for me medicinal purposes, right? She cut it off and is keeping it. So she does have- okay, so she has it back in her possession. That's the important part. Okay. Because she was trying to track it down for so long. So let's weigh- let's weigh the positives between the two. So Kassen, general survivor survival skills are probably higher. And definitely is better with uh, medicine-esque focus with her, her little box. Meanwhile, Yamame is definitely better in terms of, like, building both shelter, tools, and the like. How good she is at hunting, gathering is unknown. And medicine-wise, it's hard to say for sure because she's not really good at... She can inflict poisons, but she cannot remove diseases, you know? So, you kind of have to weigh which is most important here. Kassen is also really good with animals. Yes, I forgot about that. So, Kassen would avoid any unnecessary, like, uh... Would avoid pretty much any danger with a local wildlife. But then you have to wonder... How picky is she about eating meat? How picky would she be in this situation if you wanted to eat meat? Would she would she go would she go full pita on your ass or would she just like would she just let it be? Would she even hunt herself? Cause you gotta eat, right? 
A man's gotta eat his meat. Overall, Kasen has more positives than Yamame, but I feel like Yamame's strength is one that really cannot be matched by a lot of characters. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like the, the shelter aspect from Yamame is more important. Chat, I've never been in a wilderness survival situation. I couldn't tell you what the order of importance is, but as far as I can tell from everything I've ever seen in terms of fiction and like semi-reality, the number one thing you do in these situations, first and foremost, is you build a shelter. I believe that is often the, uh, the very first thing you aim to do, is you build a shelter. Secure a location, and then you head out and find sustenance. I think, I think shelter is the highest priority, and the fact that Yam is so good with that seems like she'd be more helpful. But I don't think Kasem would be useless on such a thing, but... Yam would be able to put you like anywhere. That's another thing. A big, an important thing as well is you can only build where the materials around you allow for, right? That's why Suiko is so good because Suiko, the, the earth is everywhere. She can pretty much pull out of her fucking stone frog wherever she wants. If you can only build a house with like big ass fucking leaves, then you have to use trees that are close to the beach. So you're closer to the water, and the water is cold. But if you're, uh, if you can go further inland and with around more wood. Then you can use this material right there. You can clear an area around yourself like that and also use the material right then and there to be a little further inland where it's warmer, farther away from the ocean. And also probably closer to a clean water source, which is very helpful. Fairies can make a home in any plant. That's true as well, yes. And as we know from Sengetsusei, fairies can invite people into their homes. So... Even though humans can't see the way into fairies' homes, fairies can still invite them in if they want them to. So that means they could make a home in a tree, and then John can come in, and they can live in the tree together. Which is really just probably not the most comfortable thing in the world for John, unless there's a big tree. Because otherwise, he's, he's sleeping like Robot uh, Fry and Bender did in the, you know, those episodes. The early episodes <laughs> before the closet was exposed. I had to sleep fucking standing up in a supply closet. I kind of dig that idea. So yeah, chat. I think, uh... I think I gotta go with Yam here, based on entirely on what I said about think shelter. I think shelter is the most important thing. So, a character who's very, very adept at creating a shelter is the most important. Versus someone who has general skills everywhere else. Because who cares if you know how to... If you know how to gather food if you can't even, like, survive the night because you don't have a roof over your head, right? I think that's more important. That said, I think Kassen is a really good pick, all the same. But Yam's, like, that, the, the thing that Yam can do, that her strongest... I don't think there's a lot of characters, if any character, that really beats her out. Well, besides Suzuko, I guess, in this regard. It's very good. Lily White and Ellie. Hmm. What do you do the 21 days after you have shelter? Well, depends on how long you're staying there, right? But still, shelter is important. And who's to say you can't expand? You ever see, uh... Think of it like Minecraft, I guess. Think of it like Minecraft. You know, you build your little, uh, 3x3 three three house. And then, you know, as you continue to live, you continue to expand it, and suddenly you have a big fucking island pad. You got a big old island pad. <laughs> Alright. Ellie we know nothing about, and Lily is a fairy. And since we're placing the we're placing the, the time frame around spring and summer, Lily is at her maximum capacity, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. It is unknown. She would make treehouse, you know. I assume that Lily comes with all the benefits of being a fairy herself. But nobody really knows what she does, aside from, like, she just comes and out to spring and leaves. Where the fuck does she go for the rest of the year? Like, could you even keep her contained on an island? What would she do? 
What what would she do? She would like you, you sit on the island. She'd be like, it's spring, and then fly away, and then forfeit the challenge. And John's just like, because he can't talk. <laughs> but then, but then, but then no one comes and picks John up, so he's just alone. <laughs> no, okay. Let's assume Lily is like Scarlet uh, or Fantasy Maiden Wars Lily. Let's assume she's like that, so she's actually like, you know, she's a competent character who is paying attention, you know? She, she's paying attention. And as we know, Lily is, uh, Lily has worked every job imaginable. So, she's, she's been, you know, she's a businesswoman, she's a fisherman, she's, uh, you know, she's everything. So, that means she's probably a lumberjack, she's probably a carpenter, she's probably a hunter. So, she can do everything. <laughs> She can do everything. You can rely on her. Now, putting putting my own bullshit aside, she is still a fairy, and it's possible. It's fair to assume that, uh, without even though she doesn't have the same kind of abilities that some of the other ones have, she would still have the general knowledge, uh, kind of that uh, uh, for fairies, and also the ability to create a shelter out of a tree. The only the real difficulty is that you have to befriend the fairy. If you're not friends with the fairy, you cannot enter their special home. So basically, John's out alone, on his own, until he can, until he can become friends with Lily. Which is, you know, how do you become friends with Lily? You say spring is awesome, but John can't talk. Chat. Uh, John can't talk. So all he can do is sit there and stare at her, and Lily be like, wee wee wee, because she can't talk either. <laughs> They can, neither of them can talk. They just, she just makes noises at them, and John just looks. <laughs> hmm. What if they write in the sand? What if, what if they communicate by writing in the sand? That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Unfortunately, there's not much to say about Ellie at all because you know, she's just a, she's a total one boss that has absolutely no characteristic to her at all It's impossible to really gauge anything from her Can fairies read and write? Uh, Luna can Luna reads the newspaper all the time Cherno does as well. Cherno reads uh, Aya's articles So like if Cherno can read then every fairy can read Mystia can read- can Mystia can't read, but Mystia can read, uh, old yokai, like, ruins. She can't read, like, modern Japanese, essentially. But she can read old yokai writing. Which is the kind of stuff that yokai books are, uh, are, are, you know. Those kinds of yokai books that Kozuzu has are. They're written in that language, which, like, Kozuzu can read them because of her ability, but nobody else can really read them because the language is ancient. Hmm. Alrighty, we're going Lily. Utso and Merlin. Well, Utso could definitely keep you warm. <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. And Merlin. See, the thing about Merlin is Merlin can't really play you a motivational song because if she does, you'll get very amped up and, and then you'll just, uh, you get too amped up. That's kind of what her thing does. Merlin and Lunasa influence their audiences too much alone. That's why Lyrica is a, a needed as a mediator to keep their keep the emotions regulated. But Merlin gets you very jacked up. And then you go, you know, you go crazy hype, but then, you know, you still burn all that stamina. So, it could be helpful if you need a boost of, uh, energy, but otherwise, she's just kind of like... She can't really play her music around you because you just end up in that state. So then she would just fuck off and play her music elsewhere where you can't hear it. It's like, oh. But other than that, it's not like she has any real important, like, relevant skills, right? See, a common thing I find with Oku is that people assume that because Oku can manipulate nuclear, uh, nuclear power that she is a beacon of radiation. But it seems to me like every other character can stand next to Utsuo and she's fine. So I don't think she just permeates radiation. 
I think it's just that, you know, she can produce it. Which probably has some kind of lingering effect for sure, but also, she's also a magical bird girl, so who's to say she has to play by the rules of the real world? You ever think of that? Her abilities are powered by fantasy. Less so science. She produces nuclear power through a sun god. Not whatever the fuck we're doing. So maybe maybe the maybe the the additional, you know, the secondary effect isn't really present there. You ever think of that? I don't I don't think you have. Oku would keep you very warm. That's what I'm getting. Would she be helpful in any other regard? I do not think so. I don't think she'd be very helpful. Maybe she'll lay an egg. But then if she did that, then... Well, that would be an awkward uh, position to find ourselves in, wouldn't it? Hmm. Still, I think, uh, I think her ability to provide heat is important. And probably more helpful than Merlin. Even though Merlin, despite not having any, like immediate skills would probably be more helpful in a lot of areas than over Utso. But I'm sure you could get Utso to do something. She's a Hell Raven after all. I'm sure she can at least semi-hunt. And hopefully she doesn't burn the forest down. Hmm. On in medicine. So on is great and she does her best to provide and she just always does her best. Is she good at what she does? Actually, yes. She's a great hand at the shrine. Both shrines. She just loves helping shrines. That's what she does. She loves being helpful. Fantastic. Medicine, on the other hand, uh, well, she'll just, you know, she'll just look at you and be like, ew, and then give you Omega AIDS, and then you're dead. So, cool. Fun. Fun character, right? Fucking great. Thanks, Medicine. I'm dead now. I don't trust her. She doesn't like humans. So I, would, I don't I don't think uh, I don't think you'd have a good time with her. She'd probably make you suffer. Maybe not necessarily die, but yeah, she would uh, she would not be very pleasant. I don't think she could possibly be helpful if she was cooperative, but she's not the kind of character to be cooperative out the gate. Unlike On, who On you land you you end up on the island with On. They say ready set go, and On be like all right I got this, and then you know. She'd go figure out something, and at the end of the night, when you're you're done, you're having a, you know, at the end of the day, the sun's setting, you're sitting there eating your fish, and then you, uh, the stick that you have the fish on, is you're all done eating your fish, you look at the stick, you look at On, On looks at the stick, On looks at you, you look at the stick, you look at On, On's still looking at the stick, you throw the stick down the beach, and On is out of there, gone, boom, like the wind, grabs the stick, brings the stick back, and now... You realize how good it is to be alive. <laughs> that's 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 right there. That's what it means to live. Cool, what what is life if not the ultimate quest to find a cool stick? Come on. So on would be fantastic. On would be there with all your best interests in mind, and you would do. I mean, John would do anything he could to protect that smile. Hmm. Oh, you're back. Okay. Uh, Kongada... I have no idea. She seems like one of those big shots. I don't imagine her being a delegator, though. I think she's just a strong woman. But at the same time, she's missing her legs. And she seems to be covered in this weird aura shit. But I don't really know what else she does besides slash her katana, and katanas aren't really known to cut trees. But, you know, maybe they do. Hmm. She's got a horn. Yeah, I guess you can put a fish on there, right? Yeah, probably. If you're out of sticks, you could use her, her forehead. I don't think she'd take very kindly to that, but... Well, if you're willing to give it a try, it's there, right? I just don't think Kotsuhime would be very helpful, but I don't have any information on Kongada, so everything I would say about her is speculation based on literally nothing but my own opinion and, like, what I see from this artwork depiction. Oh. Oh. Kongada doesn't even have legs, so... I don't really know how she works. 
don't think anyone does. I have no idea. I have to pick uh, Kotohime just based on, like, the Toa 1 characters are kind of hard to assume anything for. And Letty... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I would, I would put my trust more so in Letty in the spring than Kongada in general. Romilia and Sanyo. Okay, so... Romilia is a delegator. This is... This is a hundred percent, we know this. She's a delegator. Sanyo, I do not have enough information on. But I do know that her smoke is... Her smoke is the kind... Like, she can use her smoke to basically calm people down. So, she's good for the, uh... She's good for the mental, for sure. Just kind of help you relax. But otherwise, I'm not sure what she does. I know she runs a gambling parlor, but is she, can she cook? What can she do? I genuinely do not know. Remy, on the other hand... She would immediately, like, go find a tree, sit in the shade, fucking, and just not do anything. She wouldn't, she wouldn't cook, she wouldn't build, she wouldn't hunt, she wouldn't gather, she wouldn't do anything. But, she would be up at night, and she would probably, she would at the very least be awake at night, and she would be probably one of the safest characters to be near when sleeping. Assuming, you know, you're, you know, you're on good, good enough terms. This, you know, that's my assumption. Hmm. I don't think Remy does anything for herself. No, Remy, Remy has no information on what she did before she came to Gensokyo. Pretty much everything related to EOSD characters prior to Gensokyo is 100% fan speculation. As far as we know, Romelia has Safiya do, like, everything for her. She's a bit of a spoiled child in that regard. We've never really seen her act on her own accord. She just leaves it to... She's a delegator, like I said. So I would honestly expect Sanya to be more helpful here. Even comparing the fact that, like, they probably are both equal in terms of how unhelpful they are in all different places. Sanyo's smoke is at least something that can help you. Not directly, mind you, but it is something that can help. So there's that. Something like that. Raiko and Satono. Again, Raiko can create fire. Satono? She can, uh... She can... She can floss. Maybe. Chat, do you think Mai and Satono are familiar with every single, uh, dance known to man? What if you just fall over and die, and they, like, stand behind you, and they start doing, like... They start doing the Orange Julius. And then you just get up, and you're like, yes, I am powerful. She can do every dance. She can hit the gritty. I'm sure she can hit the gritty. They can do every dance known to man. I, I'm just assuming that's the case, though. Uh, no one knows for sure, but they're supposed to be the backup dancers, so it's fair to assume they dance. But anyway, as we established earlier, Raiko can, can uh, control lightning to a degree, and she can use that to start fires, which is very helpful. But there's not much else we can really say for sure of what she does. She is, at the very least, but what we do, we can figure out from how she reacted to the, uh, the end of the Toa 14 incident, is that she pretty quickly realized the situation she was in when she was given life and found an outside source of magic to preserve her life when the mallet's power ran out. And she shared that with Ben Ben Yatsuhashi. This is why Ben Ben Raiko and Yatsuhashi are all still alive, even though they were brought to, uh, they were brought to life by the magical mallet. And when the mallet's power kind of ran out, all, all the Tsukumogami that were given life by it also turned, returned to being objects. But not Raiko, Ben Ben, and Yatsuhashi. Because of Raiko's quick thinking, because Raiko was a Sukumogami, she was an object, so she didn't count as a living being, so she was able to go through the border and hook up with somebody and secure her own form of magic. What exactly that was, I don't know, but it is something she did, which kept her and Ben Ben and Yatsuhashi alive after the events of 14. Fortnite adds a new dance, she is the first to know. 
Bro, who do you think gives Fortnite the dances? Come on now. If I go just lightning strike somewhere where a fish lives and all the fish just float to the top of the water? I don't see why not. She can she can cast lightning bolts. She does it in a lot of her spell cards. She can just lightning bolt you. You know, baba booey. Anyway, chat, I'll be right back. I gotta use the bathroom. I'm gonna let you speculate on who's next. I'll be right back. Whoa. Whoa, it's you again. Think hard. What are you sitting there doing? Hmm? What are you just sitting there for? Okay, so last time we talked about Miko, but that was against somebody else who I've already forgotten. But Miko didn't necessarily seem bad, but I don't have a lot of positives to say about Satono because there's not a lot known about her or Mai. Even before they were Okina's assistants, there's very little to no information on who they are, who they were, or anything. They're very forgettable characters in that regard. It's almost a shame, but, well, somebody likes them, so. Some people also like watching paint dry, I guess. Oh, Jesus. Huh. Damn. Okay, Diary, I see what you're doing. That's a... Uh, wow. <laughs> You're bigger than me always, dude. That's... Wow. I, 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 I don't even know what to say. <laughs> That's just, that caught me immediately off guard. I was like, what the fuck? Okay, so let's let's discuss this. So Mioi. Mioi is a... Uh, Mioi can what? She can cook? Cool. And what else? Okay. So. Uh, Biten. Biten is a monkey. And as you know, monkeys are the king of the jungle. So. She's probably good at gathering. She's probably good at hunting. She's agile. Probably good at defense, you know? I'm not sure about shelter. Hmm. But I think... I think she has more general, uh... Considering where she was originally as a monkey. Uh, more general just survival ability than Mioi, who just kinda can cook. I don't know, Baten definitely can't cook as well as Mioi, for sure. But she probably more familiar with just raw ingredients, stuff like that, right? 
I think pretend is the option here. Hmm. No, she was a monkey. She's a monkey. And she, uh... She, I forget what she did. Uh, I think it was something. She broke the shrine or something like that. Not really sure. I don't remember. But Mioi, Mioi is a better cook, but she needs ingredients. But otherwise, I don't think she's very good at fending for herself in any real capacity. And sure, she's probably a lot softer. But if you drink something, you know, she'll probably just give you nightmares because she thinks it's really cool. I haven't read... Lotus Eaters yeah, since like chapter 8, so that, I don't know how true that is anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. The 10 could become King of the Monkeys. Oh man. Alright, so we talked about Chen earlier uh, and how she, you know, she's a cat. Chiari is, um, well. I guess the bright side about Chiari is that if you get used to the way she smells day one, you'll never have to worry about it ever again. Whereas other characters will probably get a little stinkier over time, Chiari is going to be maximum stinky from the get-go. Now, streamer, that's a little rude to say, don't you think? Yeah, but if you ever looked at Chiari, don't you feel like you can smell her image? Don't, don't, does am I the only one on that? Like, when you look at her, when you look at her art, her Zun art, doesn't she just look like somebody who smells not great? She can manipulate fire. Can she? But she's really stinky. She also has weird vials of blood on her, uh, like, attached to her side. Hmm. Some cool used, <laughs> cool used needles. No, everybody's gonna stink after a while, but I'm saying that Shiari is gonna stink right from the get-go. So you'll get used to it, and eventually it won't matter anymore. Yeah, she smells like dried blood and ash, because all her clothes are like baggy and airy and burned, you know? The burn bits. She, her hair doesn't look like she washes it. She's got a big horn. Who knows what that horn smells like, dude? Well, I don't think I care to know. Anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of shitting on Chiari for no real reason right now, but... I guess if she can manipulate fire, if she can create fireballs, she's helpful in that regard. But what else does she really do? She doesn't seem very high maintenance, so there's that. She seems pretty, uh, you know, you don't have to do a lot. But what does she do herself? Can she build? Can she cook? Can she hunt? Or can she only start fires with her weird hellfire? Like, I know Raiko, we were talking about her, like... She can start fires, too, but she has a little more to her. I think Chen is more helpful, yes. I think Chen is generally more helpful. And it would be just, you know, she's more reliable. And she wouldn't stink as much. She would smell like a cat. That's, that's pretty much it. But, like, if anyone's had a cat before, or a dog, you get used to your pet smell pretty fast. And then it's just, it's just part of the house. <laughs> I would go with Chen. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So. They both stink. But at least, at least Chiari. At least Chiari would be able to set a fire to the fireplace. Xion would find a way to set a fire and it would turn set it would set John on fire. Poor John. Xion is just she doesn't mean to, but it's just it's just what she is cursed by. Her own misfortune. She is not a smart choice in any against any character. She already asked you for your blood. I don't know actually. Would she? I would hope not. I would give her my blood in exchange for she takes a shower. How does that sound? <laughs> Aku and Tay. Alright, so. Tay. Tay is. 
Tay, Tay is long lived. Tay has been around for a long time. She's wise beyond her years, but she also feels like the kind of character who only looks out for number one. However, however, she also has the ability to grant good luck in humans that see her. And since she would be forced to interact with you a lot, you would have a lot of accumulated good luck for the situation you're in. However, that doesn't really translate to practical skills, and that just feels like a cop-out answer. Oh, you're lucky. Oh, you're lucky. At least with Xion's misfortune, we can kind of quantify it. Or like, if you're, you're kind of suffering at the hands of her ability, then everything's gonna go wrong. But is Tay just gonna like have everything go right? Like, you know the episode of Spongebob where they're in the kelp forest and the fucking plane is falling out of the sky and they drop the load and it's just a complete equipment setup for a camping site at the right on Spongebob and Patrick? Is Tay gonna make that happen to you? I don't I don't think Tay is going to do that at all. Like that's not the kind of luck like what exactly kind of luck does she provide? And the sky is kind of the limit on that idea, which I, that's why I feel like it's kind of a cheap answer. Where it's just like, yeah, she'd make you really lucky and then you would survive, I guess, because you're really lucky. It's like, how? How exactly is my, me being lucky going to survive this situation? I mean, John. Think about that. Now let's talk about Aku. Uh, Aku might die out there. Aki is the kind of character I feel like if I picked her up and tossed her into the ocean, uh, well, she would probably like catch wind and fly. That's how light she looks. Now I'm not gonna do that, but I, I'm just saying that I could probably trust her as far as I could throw her. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. She's very light. Now, obviously, she would be helpful because she's very knowledgeable in that regard, like Kozuzu, but I think physically, she would be even worse than Kozuzu, and that's not helpful. She's just frail. She's a very frail human being. So, Tay, I think, is the better answer here, because... I hate to go with the cop-out with the good luck bit, but at the very least, Tay might be able to do something for you where Aki really feels like you have to look after her and there's nothing she can actually do to help you at all. You have to do everything. It's like being a, being a dad, I guess, for a sick child. Could John do it? I don't know. Daiose and Yuyuko. Okay, so earlier I talked about Daiose. So we won't bother with that. But Yuyuko's a fun one. Why is she a fun one? Because she is definitely just going to eat all of your food supplies. And she's not going to contribute anything meaningful at all. She's just going to be in your general area and eat all of your food. And when you look, you look at her, they scream at her. And John can't talk. So John just looks at her. And his, his, his mask goes red with anger. And Yiko just stares. Just stares at him. Pretends that she can't understand what he's what's going on because he can't talk. And then proceed to eat more of his food. God damn it, Yiko. <laughs> How does John eat with the mask on? Are you... Are you really sure about that? Use advertise overstated a bit? Surprisingly, no. Now, in fandom, yes, it does paint her in a, uh, a picture of her as being like, she can literally pick up Mystia and just fucking swallow her whole, just aum. But there are different aspects that talk about her being hungry. And there's also the 13.5 cameo where Yomu is literally just shoving rice balls in her mouth as a spectator. And there's just endless amounts of rice balls. Now, you could argue that that's something that was done by... To be cheeky by fans who are working on an official game. Blah, blah, blah. But... Yomu is... Or Yuko is very well known now. For her appetite. Kirby in a kimono, I like to call her. She is well known for her appetite. 
and obviously that does get played out. But it is an aspect to her character that has become very synonymous with her. Where other characters like Rumia is less so, and characters like Yuma who are new, who are more so. She is actually the embodiment of gluttony. Yet, you, people still believe Yuko could out-eat her. <laughs> really. Does a character on his mask just become a mouth? That's a little messed up. Yeah, well, you, you don't don't worry about it, dude. I don't think you should worry about it. You just need to understand that when he think of, when he eats, he just has a you know there's like a little opening. He unties it and he his chin gets exposed and you can see his beautiful jawline, and he just takes a sippy. But that's that's it. That's all you can see. He's not allowed to show his face otherwise. But he you can see his jawline when he eats. And he looks, he looks amazing. It's like the Goblin Slayer, you know? He never takes off his helmet. But then he does, but you know, it's, point, point is, point is you don't really get to see what he looks like under the mask. But he, when he has to eat, you see a peek out of it. You know, you remember the episode of Spongebob with handsome Squidward? That's why. Squidward's so handsome that the entire, the bikini bottom just like, simped for him. Hardcore. So John wears the mask because it does things to everyone. So he restricts his power. <laughs> but his jawline pokes out when he has to eat. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Yiko. Yiko's issue, as I said, she wouldn't be very helpful and she would eat most of your uh, she would eat most of your food. She'd be hard to provide for, but she wouldn't be very helpful in providing herself. And like I said earlier with Dayose, uh, fairy, as we already established with fairies, uh, shelter in trees, uh, in tune with nature, good gatherer, and with Dai's personality, fandom-wise, of course, she definitely feels more responsible than other fairies, and more helpful, generally speaking. So, yeah. My, you know what? My can dance behind me, I mean, John, but if she's not gonna eat all goddamn food, sure. Okay, so this is the absolute quintessential delegator right here. This this fucker. This fucker right here, that's Miss Delegator. And Hiso Tensaku is just a balloon. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything. Would I rather be on an island with a balloon that does nothing? Or Yashie. <laughs> I mean, John. What would 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 you would you really? Do you understand what her ability is, right? She can get you to do fucking anything she wants, and you just lose the will. You lose the will to resist her. <laughs> resist her. I guess what doesn't go be a shelter. You could live inside of him. Isn't he a balloon? How do you crawl inside of a balloon? Hmm. I think Yashie might be one of the worst picks. He's made of steel, mate? What? I thought he was a balloon. Oh, man. Bulb. Nope, loud. Nope. 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 Sure. What? He just operates with steam. That's the only balloon thing like uh, about him. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Yashie is just... Yashie is a little dangerous, I suppose. I don't think she would help you at all, but she would definitely just get you to do whatever she wanted you to do. And you would not have a lot of uh, say. And resisting that. Hmm. <laughs> it's Otensaku, the big, big steel balloon. Hisami and Mailing. Okay, so, chat. Hisami has grape vines on her outfit, right? Can she actually, like, produce vines that grow grapes? Or is that a thing? Is that not a thing she can do? Also, would she actually be helpful? I, I would have to, uh, I would have to assume she wouldn't do anything. 
she would she would not do anything if I didn't say it was because Zamu asked her to. But you can't John can't do that because John can't talk. So Hisami feels pretty useless. Also, Hisami probably wouldn't cooperate in any way, shape, or form unless Zamu said she had to. And even then she might not do it because Hisami is a character who acts in whatever way she sees fit for getting Zamu's attention, be it positively or negatively, because this, this lady is a freak. 100% a freak. And Mei Ling, we established earlier, has a lot of aspects to her that are trustworthy in these situations. Uh, good for uh, protection, probably good at gathering, hunting, building. I like to believe that Mei Ling is very adept in a lot of different fields. But that might just be me uh, over, you know, over believing in her. But at the very least, she would make you feel safe. And Zamu, or Hisami would just, Hisami would make me feel anything but safe. I mean, John. Yoko, talking about her earlier as well. Lunasa and Stario. Okay, so Lunasa is the worst prison member to be stuck with because her music makes you sad and even a little bit like suicidal. Like she is a dangerous, uh, she's a very dangerous character to listen to the music alone to. The absolute overflow of negative emotions can result in very bad behavior. So she's a no-go. Also she's kind of depressing herself. At least that's what her character seems to want you to believe, but we don't know for sure if that's really the case for her. Sario, on the other hand, um, I don't know. I, I feel like if I was just on an, if, if John was on an island with Sario, she'd just, you know, be not afraid, my child. But then John's just like, like looking up at her. And has no idea what to say, like at all. I mean, he, well, he can't talk anyway, but you know. What does Sario do? <clears throat> this is the problem. What does Sariel do except, like, just float and be intimidating? <laughs> She's just here to collect you when you go. That's... <laughs> I don't know. I Lunasa, as long as Lunasa doesn't play any music, then we're good. But she would want to play music, so she'd have to do it somewhere where you couldn't hear. Because she's dangerous in that regard. That's very important to note. I would say Lunasa is good, better here. But that's mostly just because I can't think of anything specific Sariel can do. Really, I can't. <sighs> okay, so Unzong can't talk. He's a cloud man. He only listens to Ichiden. I don't really know how helpful he'd be. Like, at all. He's not much of a conversationalist either, huh? <laughs> but, you know. You can, uh... You can be, you, you know, you and the boys surviving the island. <laughs> you could do that right now. Hmm. <laughs> show everyone's show on an island is just life of pie. How did that movie end? What, or I guess book. Was that was that was that good? Did did he survive with the tiger? Actually, don't spoil it. I, I'm not gonna watch it or read it, but maybe somebody else will. Oh, I see. Okay. I, w I won't say that out loud just in case, but... Anyway, Unzan, I don't know. I don't I don't believe in Unzan. I don't. I don't think he'd be completely help- like, not helpful at all, but... You would just, you know, never hear from him, I guess? And I don't know how helpful he'd actually be. Hmm. Physical work would be great, but then how much more can he do, right? Would he be good at building? He'd be good at transferring materials, maybe, but would he be good at building itself? He is a big cloud man. Show, I, I, I'm willing to put my trust in Show. I mean, John. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Alrighty. So, uh. Yorihime. <sighs> Like her sister, like what, they're not gonna be in this situation. And Yorihime would just channel a god that made her, I don't know, 
she would just channel one of the 8 million gods that makes her able to do whatever she needs to do in any given situation because she just knows all of them offhand because she's very smart and very talented and very beautiful and perfect woman. And th that's, uh, that's all definitely not true, by the way. I made all of that up. I hate this bitch. But, my point is, Lunarians are, like, this, these are, these are Lunarians. These are, this is Lunarians are. However, Sengoku is, um... He's a guy. That's it. He, he's a dude. It's all like, that's... What? What else does he do? <laughs> Yorihime would be very helpful for surviving. That much is guaranteed. As much as I hate it. But she, she would be she would be helpful for that regard. I, I like to believe anyway. I'm sure there's a god for everything she could possibly need. But Sengoku is just a dude. Like, that's all I got. I don't know what he does. Nobody knows who he is. He's like John? No. Hell are you on? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Cherno and Sunny Milk. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so I actually talked about Sunny a little bit in advance earlier. And Sunny's ability is the worst of the fairies because going invisible doesn't really help you with hunting in any real way because prey will run away at, at loud noises even if they can't detect what's actually there. So I think Cherno wins out here just because they pretty much fulfill the same role, but Cherno is a lot more helpful in uh in various other like miscellaneous situations. She's better at gathering or better at hunting, but they both be pretty equal in gathering. Now personally, you know, I'd rather hang out with Sunny than Cherno, but that's a personal preference, not John. John John loves all equally because he's such a big hearted man, of course. So I think yeah, Cherno Cherno just has more applications that are more helpful than Sunny in this situation. So Cherno is the better pick here. Much as I would say that uh, I would prefer Sunny personally. I would still I prefer Sunny over Megumi though. That is still okay. Different kind of fairy, still a fairy. I don't know if it counts though. This is the problem. She can she can set fire. That's good. I don't know if she has the same kind of uh, abilities that regular fairies do because she's a hell fairy. She's a little different. But she can start fires. And that's good. And Sumireko can put out fires with her tears. And that's, that's about it. That's what she can do. Now, as long as you don't look at the torch, you're okay. And it's fine. Just don't look at the torch. And I'm sure that given the circumstances, if Clown Peace found herself in this situation with you, it's because she was asked to do so, so she would take it seriously, you know? So, let's assume that she's not going to try and fuck this up. But she does produce heat, which is great. And you can, like, she may find a very unconventional fairy home, though. Because remember, she lives under the Hakurei Shrine because she's a weirdo. But that's a place that, that was her place. It was made for her. So she'll find a really weird place for, for, for uh, her to, like, be. And you, if you're okay with that, you could probably, you could probably deal with that. At least I hope so. Okay, so yes, I know Shinky created all of Makai. I know Shinky is great. She's very powerful, but does that help here? Does that help you survive on an island? I don't think so. Nobody really knows how exactly she creates things, by the way. It's just that she created Makai and everything within it, so. That's all I really have there. What materials she needs, I do not know. If she could just create servants, then yes. She could create people to do things for her and you'd be set, like, 100%. But I don't know if she can just do that. That's the thing, right? Nothing's really been explained on that regard. If we assume that, yes, she could just create as many bodies as possible to do things for her, then you would probably want her because she would just... You wouldn't even need to be there. She could do it alone. You wouldn't even need to be there anymore. 
But if she was just at the mercy of whatever's at the island and she couldn't make anything, would she be able to be of any help? You know what would happen? You, John would build the shelter, make, get the food. Shinky would just sit there and talk about, you know, she would lament that she can't use her abilities. And then over the fire, when you're eating your grub, she'll talk about her daughter. And then she'll just sit there and gush about her daughter for hours. She'll even pull out baby photos. Where does she keep them? I don't know, but she'll have them. She will embarrass the shit out of Alice to a complete stranger. Because she loves her. And John John's just John's gonna sit there and and presumably smile and nod. But that's all that's all. That's all that you can Shinky can really do. I assuming we're not letting her create anything out of anything, which she has been to we've been told she can do. So chat, what do you think? What do you think? Should we allow Shinky's ability to work like just being able to create whatever she wants? Or should we restrict it so she can't do that without some kind of, like, catalyst? What do we do here? Would it be the same as Keiki if we allow it? Kind of. But, like, Shinky creates whole-ass people. Like, where, uh, Keiki creates Haniwas. And granted, she made Mayumi, so there's an argument to be made there. But Keiki sculpts stuff, but Shinky just fucking like creates life. Straight up just creates life. Yeah, I think Sh I think Shinky would be at the top. Ba uh, because she can create more bodies, so it's not a two-man job anymore. Which is a little unfair in that sense, right? Hmm. She made an entire realm. Yes, I know. I know, she made Makai and everything within it. So she could probably turn a, a deserted island into, like, essentially a resort. Gonna run out of food in your island nation. Not if she creates fucking fish people, dude. If she creates fish people who can go into the ocean and bring back food, you're good. Because Shanky's not leaving the island, so somebody else leaving the island and bringing her food. Nobody said that was against the rules, right? All right, we're gonna give her. We're gonna allow her to free reign chat, which means she's broken, and she's gonna be top of the list. <laughs> Cause nobody, nobody can outdo Sinky's ability. Nobody can outdo it. So remember, when you see her again, remember what we've allowed and understand why she's top pick. Ron and Misamaru. Misamaru, I don't know enough about, and also I don't think she's really done anything. Ron, on the other hand, has effectively become Yukari's caretaker of many works of fictions, and even to a lesser extent, she still does a lot of, uh, she is, Yukari delegates a lot of tasks to her. So, she's basically mom at home. Like, this is mom at home, and this is mom at home. But, nobody wants, nobody wants this mom. This is the mom they want. So, this is, uh, this is, this is a pretty easy answer. Ron. Ron, assuming that she's, you know, under the order of Yukari to cooperate, she'll be perfectly fine. She can do everything. She's strong, capable. You know, you don't have a lot to worry about with her. I don't think you do anyway. Okay. Uh, Sika can build, I think. Sika can build. She has infinite sake, which you probably shouldn't drink, but she does have it. So there is there is that at least. She does come equipped with that. Uh she's strong. She's great at gathering, yes. She is great at gathering. She can make the Minecraft house before dusk. I think, I think, yeah, and she also can make mini hers, which do more, uh, more tasks faster. Okay, Suika, but you know, Suika can definitely work, but you know that at, uh, when she decides it's time for break, she takes a break. Like, there is no, you're not winning that argument. She'll work when she needs to work, 
and then she'll fuck off and you then you're on your own so hopefully you, she does some enough I still think that's more helpful than Aka for sure but she's definitely a bit of a uncontrollable uh, factor to say the least Ichiden and Kagero. So Ichiden is kind of a pretty just standard character, I suppose, without Unzan. Nothing particularly stand out for her, but she's fine. Kagero lives in the woods. She's a wolf, so she's a good hunter by nature. She's probably decent at gathering as well. <coughs> is she warm? I don't know. Probably. She wouldn't like the full moon, but... I wouldn't say they're too different, these two, but Kagero is definitely better in the procuring food uh, part, for sure. And with that, chat, we're gonna stop. 10 for Seni. Yeah. We're gonna save right here. 10%, two and a half hours. Now remember, the early part of these stories always take forever because we spend so much time yapping. But once we kind of run through every character, then we start moving a lot faster. So, there you go. This was the beginning of our sorter. And so far, it's pretty good. It's a fun, fun sorter. I enjoy it. A lot of, uh, you know, we're, we're moving the, uh, getting the brain moving, thinking of ideas, having a good time with it. And we will continue this next Saturday, for sure, with these two characters.